pussy calls me. And when the nigga start hating, that's when the nigga lost me. Fantastical, that's what the hoes call me. Mizuma TV back with some more fighting news. All right, guys, shout out the boxing scene for the consistency on their articles when uh, regarding the idea of Kell Brook moving up to 154 pounds. I didn't actually get to read the article. I just saw it there, and it triggered an idea. So, fuck it. I'm going to make this video. Now, a lot of people, including Eddie Hearn, uh, especially after that, post, uh, that post-fight interview, uh, says that the move now is for Kell Brook to move up to 154 pounds. Um, I don't know if they was trying to use the weight drain as an excuse. Uh, whatever the fuck it is, man. Uh, Kell Brook said he can make the weight again. So, uh, I'm not trying to hear that excuse. He said it out of his own mouth after the Spence fight, you know. he They asked if he can make Walter weight again. He said, he clearly said yes. And then they moved along. So, uh, no excuses. Kell Brook lost this fight. You know what I'm saying? It's not the same eye that Triple G injured. Uh, he broke his right over the bone in the first fight with Triple G. Then in the second fight... Um, Errol Spence finished off the left orbital boom. So that's just what it is, man. Uh, I guess the motherfucker got glass eyes, man. It just is what it is. You got weak bones, whatever. So, but that's not what, what I'm what I'm here to talk about. I'm not here to bash Kell Brook at all. But I am gonna keep it honest. You know, as a boxing fan, I am aware of the 154 pound division, and I know the fighters that are in that division. But uh. With that being known, I don't think Kell Brook will have any kind of success at 154 pounds if he faces the elite. Yeah, he could probably beat a Yuri Foreman. Uh, uh, fucking, uh, I don't even know these guys. Uh, I would say Vanez, but I don't think he could beat Vanez, man, to keep it honest with you. Uh, I don't know. This is a lot. You know, like the, the lower ranked guys, he probably have a chance against Willie Nelson, which I doubt. Willie Nelson. Although he got knocked out by Andrade, that's Andrade, and Willie Nelson is a big ass puncher and a big ass junior middleweight. So taking this all into consideration, how will he in fact become champion at 154 pounds? His best chance will be against Jared Hurd, and Jared Hurd, uh, I met him in the past, cool dude, you know, um, real laid back dude from what I've seen, you know. Um, but it's not because he has the better skill set because I don't know that for sure. These guys, I haven't studied uh, Jared Hurd all like that, and I, I, I'm, I don't know that for sure because anything could happen in the ring. But the only reason why he would have a chance against Jared Hurd is because he's kind of inexperienced with being a world titleist, you know. So that that's the only thing I would say, you know. But uh, Kell Brook's biggest fights, well, his three biggest fights was Kell Brook, I mean uh, Sean Porter. Earl Spence, Triple G, and he lost two out of those three. So, you know, uh, we can say that he he doesn't have the experience of beating top-level opposition, unless you want to consider Sean Porter that he was the world titleist at the time, so you can't give him that. But uh, at 154 pounds, I can't see who Kell Brook will beat. I can't see him beating Eris Landy Laura. I just can't at all. I think he'll get outboxed. Uh, clearly he will get pot shot it and then he fuck around and get his eye fucked up again because uh, Laura did the same shit to Angulo. Not saying that Angulo and Kell Brook fight the same because that's not true at all. But uh, with those with those sharp accurate punches, it might swell his shit up again. So I could see him losing to Ares Landy Laura. Demetrius Andrade, he will get abused just based on the styles and how active and how much of a volume puncher and hard puncher Demetrius Andrade is. Uh, I don't think he'll be Andrade at all. You know, Cotto, he, I don't know, man. Uh, Cotto, it depends on how Cotto is. It, it depends on what Cotto, how, how Cotto is that night. If Cotto's on his shit, then I can't see Kell Brook beat. I actually see him getting stopped, uh, especially since he quit those last two times like that. When when the pressure's on and Cotto put that pressure on him, he, he might fold as well, you know. Uh but it's a chance, you know, but Kirkland, Kirkland going to be on that ass, man. If he was the fight and he has Ann Wolf in his corner, uh, Kirkland's going to be on that boy ass, and it, it might not be too good for him, you know what I'm saying, especially since he's he's facing bigger guys uh, that are coming down from higher weights than he is, you know. Um, who else? Shit. Who who else is at the top of the 154-pound? Jamel Charlo? Uh man, I, I can't see him being Jamel either, man. Especially on the momentum, the momentum that he has on his side, man. 
this is like hard to even see him become a world champion. I can't see him being any of the world champions except Jarrett fucking her. I can't see him being anybody else. Erickson Lubin, I don't think he beats him either. So uh, this is all opinionated. I, I'm not sure. I'm not Nostradamus. I don't know what's going to happen in the future with Kell Brook's career. I don't know if he will be any top-level opposition shit. He might. Who knows, you know? But until then, let me know what y'all guys think. Do you think Kell Brook has a solid chance at 154 pounds? Uh, watching, the Kel, watching the Triple G fight, a lot of people thought he would be a problem at 154 pounds. But after watching him lose at welterweight, uh, it's hard to see that. But let me know what y'all guys think, man. Let me know all y'all opinions uh, down below. This is Mizuma TV. Subscribe to your boy, and I'm out.